Uh, good evening. My name is Randy Aloy. I live in uh, 9420 Whitton Lane. And, you know, this is like a personal concern. It was a Saturday morning. I'm a physical therapist by profession. I work 10 hours every day. There's a research been done that if you're a medical professional, you should, you should be able to sleep at least eight hours on a regular basis just to be able to provide good care for your patient. Early morning, Saturday, seven o'clock in the morning, those, I don't want to, they call it bulldozer dump trucks, is like plowing that side behind my house and really noisy. It really makes, makes me awake. It's really frustrating to have those kind of noises. I listen to a lot of hard rock music. There is nothing more than truck driving in behind, beside your house three o'clock in the morning. If you have time, you can go there. I have been living in that place for almost since 2007. Every three, four o'clock in the morning, I can hear those dumb 18 wheeler trucks like running, dong, 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 dong. And it's really noisy. Now, if we're gonna put some more house there, that, Regardless of how much decibel they were discussing in here, that's gonna, gonna be really a lot of noise. And one, my other concern about to with you saying that those trees are in poor condition. Like I said, I've been living there since 2007. I have observed those trees change colors every change of season. I've seen some fox animals, wild deer, for more than like 10, 15 occasions in there. For me, that justified that those trees are not in poor condition. And, you know, I like that area be be before I bought my house because you have good, nice view on the back of my house and to put warehouses, which they said they're going to put a lot of trees and drivers or driving there, we're not going to be able to see those buildings. I just don't think that it's accurate. Now. If you're living in that village, you would definitely see those warehouses. And it's, you know, like a stone in the eye. Thank you. My name is Peggy Golis. I live at 9131 South Somerset Lane with my parents and my family. My mother already spoke. My biggest question is where are the EPA studies? Where are the sound studies? Where are the tree studies so that the village residents can view these tests that were done? Can anyone answer that? You said there was a sound study that was conducted. Where can we view that? No, I did not say that there was a sound study from us. The uh, developer did um, have a consultant evaluate the impact and the benefit of businesses as they would be developed and how they would buffer sound from the tolling. Certainly, they'd be willing to provide this to you. Okay. As to all the other studies, uh, we have them in the development department. We're happy to provide them to anybody who makes an inquiry. Great. Thank you. Okay, the second from the back row. Hi. My name is Lori Scruzina. I live at 1841 Witham Lane. Um, it was just a short time ago that our bedroom window, I back up to Frontage Road, and we can see Frontage Road very well, as well as Woodward, and I looked at my husband and I said, I know you hate the noise in this house. I said, but, if you look out this bedroom wi window, it's quite beautiful. The trees, the, the couple houses next to us, the landscaping was beautiful. And a few days later, I came back into town and it was all gone. Um, I know whatever your map shows on here, it looks like there's actually gonna be a little bit distance from the frontage road to where the entrance to where the trucks are gonna be coming out of. I want you to go and look at that because I actually can stand on my deck in my backyard. You can't have company because it's way too noisy. But I stand out there and I do wave to my grandson as his school bus comes over the I-55 expressway. And he can see me from that school bus. I can walk in a matter of seconds from my house to that corner, okay, at Woodward. There is no space where that road could be any distance because as soon as you get to that corner, you start walking up and you're walking over the expressway. My view will now be nothing but trucks coming back and forth because like I said, I'm right at that frontage road. You're talking about 400 trucks going in and out of there. I, I know they're gonna, go, they're gonna turn right and they're gonna go over the expressway, but once again, there's no distance from where frontage road is to where this road could be starting for these trucks. 
So once again, if you would just look at this map and really see how this is, but for anybody that has a house along that frontage road, unless you're gonna put up a whole bunch of trees for us or something, and there is space if you wanna do that, but I'm telling you, it's really not gonna be nice because you can't go in your yard now, and you're certainly not gonna be able to go into your yard once these trucks are running 24 seven on, in and out of there. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Joe, Joe Marsiglio, 1660 Chaucer Lane. I know you went over the revenues and projections, but what are the additional costs to the city for this project and the additional costs over the next 25 years? What study was done on that? I'm sure our officers here are gonna be taxed a little bit harder. Police department, or fire department's gonna be taxed harder. Uh, anything done there? That's, that's the first question. That's for, I'll just let you answer them as I go along. As part of the developer proposal, the uh, developer is required to submit a tax, school, and impact analysis. And this looks at uh, not only the proposed revenues that the development, and what we're referring to is the entire 80 acre development would provide, but it also looks at what are the potential costs so that you could evaluate the net benefit in terms of tax dollars to the village and the other um, taxing bodies. For the village specifically, uh, and this is excluding Edward Don because of uh, and the, the incentives that are provided for there, the, the annual revenue initially to the village would be about $416,000 a year. The annual cost, about $177,000 for a, a net benefit of $214,000 to the village. To the other taxing bodies, based on full build-out of the proposed business plan and the 80 acres, uh, the benefit annually, annually would be $1.1 million. Okay. Uh, in regards to your sound study, um, it seems just to be a little bit in inaccurate um, that was done by whoever it is over here. Uh, most of those trucks aren't going to be going 40 miles an hour down that uh, road. They're going to be starting and stopping, which creates a lot more noise than just the truck going at 40 miles an hour. Are you going to do a study in regards to that, to the real life scenario rather than a make-believe scenario? There's been no uh, further study done. That's the analysis. So you're ready to go ahead with the project without having full data in that regards? That will be a decision by the village board as to whether additional data is necessary. Okay. And, and lastly, just so other people can speak, yeah, it's, it's a, a huge, huge difference between an office complex and a warehouse complex. complex. Um, we, we already have an office complex off of Frontage and Lamont Road, which doesn't seem to cause that many problems, but a warehouse complex can obviously cause a lot more problems. Um, and I don't know if you can put restrictions on uh, in regards to that, but I think one of the other presidents said, you know, maybe biohazards they might be doing there. There's a lot of different things a warehouse can do. And just because Edward Don's going in there today doesn't mean they can go out of business in two years and somebody else can come in. So please take that into consideration. Thank you. All uh, hazardous materials, MSDS, is required by our ordinance and by statute to be shared with all public safety. And that's with our, ourselves as the village of Woodridge, who are our emergency management agency for the community, and as well as the fire district. Uh, Gary Woodridge Fire District. When we see something that is unusual, and almost all, everybody has some hazardous materials in their homes, whether it's bleach, uh, uh, those things that you put, I put under my sink, I guess, is where I put mine. Um, once we see something that's unusual, we will work with those groups, and then we will develop specific responses for those. Um, I was just trying to think as we were talking, there's only one or two facilities down in that park that have anything that's unusual uh, that, that would concern us. And that's nowhere near where this is being built. Good evening, my name is Weston Olchek, 9135 South Somerset Lane, Woodridge, Illinois. Um, I'm, I'm up here to kind of state the obvious. We got a lot of people that came up here in uh, voiced being against this, but I've yet to hear one person come up here and say that why let's go ahead with this project. 
And after just hearing the last numbers, it's even more disturbing. You're going to build this large complex in the backyard of some of the largest residential homes in Woodridge for what? $200,000. $200,000 of increased revenue for this village. And the question is, we got a whole group of residents here that are against this, that have moved to Woodridge to raise their family, to make a better home for themselves. And we elect people like yourselves to hopefully look out for us. But it looks like tonight, instead of looking out for the residents here of Woodridge, we're looking out for three groups of individuals. We're looking out for McShane, we're looking out for Gallagher and Henry, and we're looking out for Edward Don. Edward Don's going to make an increased amount of revenue due to the tax break, which is great for them on pro-business, but it shouldn't have to come at the cost of $200,000 to the village of Woodridge. It should be a larger number in order to achieve this type of increase in revenue in order to build this type of project here in the village of Woodridge. And it's upsetting, it really is. Because unfortunately, I've had other dealings here with the village, and there's one reason why this project is going through, it's because the landowner is who they are, and they've done so much business here in the village, and it's gonna go through. And it's very disheartening, and I hope everybody here on this board looks deep and asks themselves, hey, if I lived in this subdivision, if I lived near this project, would I want this in my backyard? Because I know I don't. We got a group here of individuals who don't want it in their backyard. And I hope you guys all think really hard. If you guys already made up your mind, that's great. But when you, before you do vote tonight, I hope you look a little bit harder, look deep, and think to yourself, hey, but I want this in my backyard. Is this $200,000 worth everything that Woodridge is going to get for our residents? Or should I be looking out for the residents of Woodridge and not just big business and the largest landholder? Thank you. Um, my name is Perry Patel, and I live in 9220 Bedford Drive, Woodridge. Um, most of my concern has been addressed with uh, previous friends and uh, families, but a couple things I would like to address is, one thing is, speaking from my own experience, is um, I drive every day to the International Parkway, and I see every other day the truck driver, either they can't make a left turn right to the, the warehouse or whatever the building it is, they take almost 10, 15 minutes just to make the turn. So I have to literally wait for five to 10 minutes every day to cross that International Parkway. So the traffic is going to be definitely a, a big concern for all the people live there and commute there. The second thing is we also mentioned about uh, 4,000 trips every day, last trip. If you do the warehouse versus less office versus only office, but these trips we talk about only during the daytime. Here, I think this is a warehouse. So basically the, the truck and traffic is going to be all day. And I think, and like everybody mentioned, the noise is going to be very, very disturbing. So basically, at least people, they work every day and they at least expect a good sleep, right? So if you have a truck going down every day, and especially in the night time, that's probably not going to be good for anybody. And third thing is everybody work really hard for their, their house, right? This is the biggest invest, um, investment. So, I mean, right now, economy is bad, therefore 1K is probably very down and a lot of people lives in the Woodridge house they are all senior citizens right so if this is the only thing they have right now because of the economy they probably don't have a job and they're barely making their you know trying to pay their bills and you know pay all the whatever the dues they have so if if the property value goes down then they have nothing to hold on to so please uh, keep all these things in your mind when you, uh, in your mind when you vote and another thing which I also repeat is just think would you like to have a warehouse in your backyard before you vote? I mean, if the answer is yes, I mean, you can vote whatever the way you want to, but I think that, I think please keep that in mind. Thank you. Hi, Rich Guzier, 9220 Witham, Woodridge. I had a couple concerns with the building because the land slopes south to north. I see on the drawings the buildings are roughly 37 feet tall. Do we know exactly how tall they are? And is that land being sloped or is it being flattened? Uh, I would uh, recommend that uh, we have uh, Shane's uh, consultant describe the height of the buildings relative to Woodward Avenue with exhibits that show that. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, Brett Duffy, Spaceco, 9575 West Higgins Road, Rosemont. Um, the property is uh, being will be masqueraded to. Uh, it does slope from uh, south to north, and then from uh, partially from west to east. It will be leveled uh, to put the building pad in. The building will be uh, the finished floor will be roughly about 10 feet above Woodward Avenue, and another 35 feet high uh, uh, to the top of the building. In the drawings, if we are looking at a uh, 37 foot building, the trees are half the size of the building. Is there any plans for that to put something there that would be bigger or could grow taller? And how long would that take? The um, something I have for the Edward Don Company is how many shifts does the Edward Don Company have? I work for a family owned business, and we only have one shift, but I'm wondering how many different shifts and what time of the day do they start so I know what time traffic's going to be heavier at. We also heard that you're going to have box trucks, or I'm sorry, 24-foot trucks. Are they box trucks, flatbeds, tandems? A family-owned business, we have over 150 trucks with all different types of size engines and things. And I know someone already talked about first gear and second gear. Um, if anyone has a stick shift, to get in out of first gear, you've got to rev that thing up to 6,000 RPMs or higher. It's going to be a lot louder. And if it's only 300 feet away from that one corner, those houses are going to get the brunt of that noise. I know there's no studies, but please keep that into consideration. Where the trucks come out, where you're proposing the south end of the land, if that is roughly higher than the houses, all those semi-trucks are going to be pretty much eye level at the houses or second floors. So they have to consider that those lights from those semis turning right all day, all night long will be shining into those houses on the corner and down the frontage road. Did you look at how much closer that stop sign or the new south entrance is from the bridge? you take a 52-foot semi, stop on Woodridge, heading north, how much time does a, do the kids out of the movie theater have time when they come over that bridge? I know the roads were planned there uh, much later, that the streets are much further down, but this new stop sign or new entrance is going to be much closer to the top of that bridge. I didn't know if that was a concern. Would the village propose a tax credit if this goes through and we are complaining about noise to seek other options of saying we'll give a tax credit to sound deadening windows, different types of drywall and building products? That would be something to look at to at least help us out with the sound. Uh, I do have to say I do not like the noise. I, I hope it does not happen. I can hear the noise at night and I have hearing aids and I have 40% lost hearing in both ears and I can hear the semis without them in my house. I just hope you don't do it. Thanks. Michael, if I miss anything, please uh, keep me on task. Um, the number of vehicles that we have uh, that are the Edward Don vehicles with the Don logos, they're 24-foot uh, straight tracks, uh, single axle. Uh, they have automatic transmissions. They're not stick shift. So that's a much smoother and lower uh, you know, e uh, means of starting and stopping. Uh, we operate the building three shifts a day, which that was we, we talked about that last week. Um, and the... Um, the um, Three shifts. We do operate three shifts, and that's uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, we end Friday evening uh, around 6 p.m., and then we start Sunday uh, evening around 7 p.m. And so we're typically shut down. Only emergency situations do we work if there's weather-related things um, on a Saturday, typically. Hey, Michael, did I miss anything else? No, I think that's good. And I think to address um, the uh, elevation, um, the consideration of the materials and colors that were put into the elevation, and for the machine and their consultants to describe that and maximum height of the potential trees that would be 
part of the uh, proposed lands. I think I actually might ask um, uh, John Ryan from uh, Ives Ryan, our landscape architect, to come up and talk about how tall the trees will be when we first plant them and at what, what their maximum height will be to maybe give a better understanding. John Ryan, Ives Ryan Group, 324 Eisenhower Lane, Lombard. One of the reasons for setting the building back considerably further than 30 feet actually 139 feet is to give us the ability to install waves of trees as opposed to just a single row. Um, we have existing trees as our first wave which are the existing parkway trees which are currently in the area of four to six inch in caliper or four to eight inch in caliper uh, many of which are 25 or so feet tall uh, as we speak. Uh, immediately starting on our property we are creating a series of berms with large groups of evergreen trees, which at the time they were planted would be anywhere from eight to 14 feet tall and then add two to three feet to each one of those heights for the, the berm that they're sitting on. Uh, additionally, since there will be views under trees, we are creating large colonies of, of uh, what we call ornamental trees which will fill in the gaps when you look below trees. Uh, these uh, are planted all along Woodward in between the evergreen trees. Immediately behind them are more deciduous trees which we have upsized from the existing or from the uh, required two and a half inch to three to four inch. So at the time of planting they will be in the area of 18 to 20 feet tall. And then up against the building itself on the other side of the detention pond we have additional large groups of trees um, which are ornamental type trees which we're basically planting in groups of 8 to 10 which with three trunks per tree so you have at least 20 trunks in a group and those trees are being planted in the area of 10 to 16 feet tall. Um, so the idea is to have wave after wave after wave of, of trees uh, as well as shrubs filling in the gap below the trees and you can expect uh, once the trees are established, after the first year, probably each tree will gain an initial foot per year uh, during the worst of times and hopefully more if uh, you know, the weather cooperates. My name is Jen Jazak and I live at 1231 South Somerset. Um, I moved into the subdivision about five years ago. Um, we built the home ourselves. Um, Planned on raising a family there. I have a one and a three year old, so I'm up here as a parent, um, like many of the other people are. Um, you've heard all this already. Uh, the noise in our yards obviously is awful. I'm not going to keep going on that. Other things I'm concerned with, we have a lot of issues in my backyard. I'm assuming a lot of people. I live along the retention pond. Um, when I moved in, we were told that something would be done with that retention pond in terms of aeration and things like that. It is a mosquito cesspool. Um, they come around and spray, you know, once every couple weeks or if you call and complain, but it's awful. Nothing's been done with that. There is a wildlife area, not wildlife, excuse me, natural life area between my home and the retention pond. They took down sod of everyone that put it in after two years of waiting and put up their plan that they went ahead with. It has not been maintained. It has since ruined my lawn. I just paid $500 to have my lawn fixed. Um, and not to mention, you know, the sound in my backyard. I won't take my kids in my backyard. I barely take them in my front yard. Um, all of these things, I have tried calling the village. I still am waiting for someone to call me back about my grass and dealing with that. My question is that all of these things have, I've been told are going to be done. I was told, oh, they're going to have to do something with the sound. They're going to do something with the pond. Oh, we'll take care of that natural grassland area for you. Nothing gets done. So how can we sit here and hear you say, well, the police are going to do this. The village is going to do this. Uh, all this natural beauty is going to be around the sub this uh, buildings here. How can we trust that all that's going to get done when nothing has been done with our property at all? And when we have tried to initiate something getting done, we're just shot down. I know I turned in those papers. Um, and I, I was one of, the few, one of the people that said, I will cut you a check right now. I don't care if my share is five grand. Here you go. Put it towards the sound wall and then we were shot down. So how can we trust that all these things regarding this property will get done? Um, my second issue is, I was kind of calculating on my calculator here, should there be residences in this area? I think I figured about 200 to 240 residences on an 80 acre piece of property. 
if each home paid $8,000 a year, comes out to anywhere between 1.6 and 1.9 million dollars. And yet, what was that figure again that we're getting from this business in tax revenue? All the revenue uh, for the village over a 30 year period would be approximately 30 million dollars. My 1.6 to 1.9 is per year. If you had 200 homes in that 80 acre area. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that if you have 1.9 million dollars of tax revenue, um, the costs aren't $1.7 million to net us that $200,000 that were coming up. So again, as people were saying, isn't there a better use of this land? I'm all for business. I'm all for making it a better place to live. Um, one of the few meetings I was at regarding the sound wall, I, was, I remember a comment very vividly, I believe it was by the village attorney, where I was, everyone was told, we didn't ask you to live here. I believe on your website it says Woodridge is a good place to live. And I chose to come here and raise a family. And you know what? I can't sell my house. I paid almost a half a million dollars for it. I can't even get it refinanced because it's worth 350. One of the comments on my appraisal was noise. One of the comments was, uh, I forgot something about the strange growth in my backyard. Um, and I put, you know, 20 grand into landscaping and it's ruined from that ground that's not being taken care of. So again, I, I'm all for it if it's a good thing, but when are you going to do something for us? And you know what? Someone mentioned putting trees along frontage, take some of those hundreds of, I'm forget what the guy is, take some of those hundreds of trees and please plant them along frontage then. With all this increase, do something to show us that you care and you're going to do something for that area. Half a million dollar homes and we can't get anything. Can't even barely get, I'm surprised we're getting heard today and I appreciate it, so thank you. I was the attorney who was here, and you're kind of misquoting what I said. What, what the re, that came up in the context of uh, the village had an obligation to tell us what was going to be built. And I indicated the village had no idea who was buying those properties. We're not involved in the transaction. And the comment was, well, you invited us to move here. That's why it's an obligation. And speaking from the legal point, uh, I was mentioning no. The village did not invite you to create an obligation on its part to, to track down who was purchasing the home. When you put that on your website, nice and big, it kind okay, of invites you to look here. Now, uh, but that leads me into a, a discussion we, we had back then uh, with the sound walls. And certainly Mr. Bethel can sit down if anybody wants to see what occurred and, and what was or not done in accordance with the procedure that was set up. Uh, uh, I appreciate, I mean, I understand, I appreciate, I sympathize with the noise from moving back to 55 or 355. That was there. 55 was in existence, 355 was being built or planned and at the time this property was even uh, planned. That's right. And, and I did say that. But the plans certainly have been in existence and was pointed out that there were plans uh, that, that it's, if, if someone had been advising you, they might have been able to point it out. The, the issue of the zoning, uh, again, it's not something anybody wants to hear, but uh, under Illinois law and federal law, a property owner's rights are paramount to a government's, with certain exceptions. Municipalities can impose reasonable zoning regulations. The Woodbridge has a zoning ordinance. Back in 1989, when the property was annexed, uh, it was already known that there could be offices across the street. And it was also noted that during the term of the annexation agreement, there was multifamily. I don't know how many homes that would be. It was a possibility, but that possibility would expire in 1989. That was in a document, and, and it was a matter of public record, and I'm sorry that, that not everyone was able to determine that. But even looking at the map, it said there could be these offices today with nothing more. If the if Gallagher Henry and a developer chose to build offices in accordance with that plan, they wouldn't be in any type of hearing. They could submit plans, get permits, and build it. Uh, it was, uh, I, mean, I don't know, I'm either here to support or, or uh, reject uh, the other non use, but uh, only because they're here seeking some relief although there's the explanations of how it affects the, uh, the neighborhood, uh, 
only because of that is the village able to get additional items to help offer the area. The, again, the 55 was there, and I apologize, I mean, the highway had a window, window trail. The 55 was there, 355 and maybe substantial as a belt that was in the planning. Uh, woodwork was always in our territory. It was intended to be. It was constructed to receive car traffic. And the traffic studies indicated that it's not anywhere near capacity. And it, it is what it is. There is an argument. I'm not an MAI appraiser. But when an appraiser looked at your property for purposes of your mortgages, it took into consideration that the property adjacent or across the street from you it was zoned for potential office or multifamily. People would also argue multifamily reduces the value of homes adjacent to them if they're a nice single family. So many of these issues have existed, and, and, and I disagree with anyone who suggests this property is equivalent to the Tampa property. And the village went all out to help protect the residents with your loan assistance to defeat that and, and get the uh, property cleaned up. This is an entirely different issue. It's, it's not a contaminated property. There are the phase one assessments on it, for my understanding. And it's not a contaminated property. And uh, so they have rights too, and it's always been able to be developed with office. So I, I think it's, uh, it's not the current vacant property's obligation to, to ameliorate all these other conditions that have existed for years. And, and I know nobody appreciates hearing that, but I at least ask you to understand that or attempt to. Thank you, Mr. Gentleman. Further girls, still here? Yes, please. Barry Lekowitz, 9621 Witham Lane. Um, the only thing I have to ask is with this new structure that's going on, I'm sure it's going to not be one thing, another thing, another thing. It's going to be a whole widespread sort of things that's going to happen. Is there going to be any uh, tax implications for all the householders? Well, just uh, tax money coming off. The reductions, yeah. Now that you have a court, I mean, now that corporate is moving into Woodridge, would there be any uh, reduction in taxes? One of the village's goals over the last 25 years is to encourage diversification of tax base to promote eventual reduction of taxes on the residential community. Um, the village itself, for 24 years, reduced its tax rate. Um, the best way to help the other taxing bodies to do the same, because they don't have the same resources or revenue coming in, is just through property tax and uh, the improvement uh, of their property tax base. So to that regard, with um, the tax impact study, projecting that all the taxing bodies would receive annually $1.1 uh, $1 million in taxes from this development that would help in that regard. So basically, that would be a negatory. Negatory. The village, the village has very um, limited ability to influence how the other tax industries um, uses the dollars. Um, so if they get new dollars, whether or not they actually reduce their taxes, their portion of the taxes, it's really up to them. Um, what we're trying to do um, on a regular basis is to try to provide sufficient tax dollars so that they can actually Thank you. My name is Frank Fletcher Brochek. I live at 3012 John Quill Lane. I am not a neighbor to this project, and I think most of you know that. I'm here because I read this interesting article this morning in the online 
Patch newspaper about sales tax revenue and utility tax revenue rebates, so I just have a few questions and I won't take up a lot of time here. This resolution R67, is this just for the Edward Don Company or are the other lots and businesses in the future covered by the language in this resolution? Okay. And the, the rebates are for utility and sales taxes just for the Edward Don Company? How much water and sewer tax revenue is anticipated from the 350 person occupancy business per year? I'm sure you calculated this in order to, I'm interested in the amount of money per year. I don't know what to think about the 30 year amount, so. You, you have the number. Well, I provide this number that's provided by the uh, study for the entire park as to what would be generated in terms of water and utility. No, I'm only interested in, right, the here and the now is the Edward Don Company. That's what the resolution's for. It's probably just a two-inch pipe going to the building. It's only 350 people. How much money are bathrooms going to use in the sewer tax per year from the Edward Don Company. And then I guess you're multiplying 25% times that. That's the amount of the rebate per year. It, it is based on a projection of what the uh, development, and specifically the Edward Don building, would generate a year. The estimate, the utility taxes that would be generated is approximately $80,000. Okay. All right. So the rebate is a quarter of that. No. The, uh, the way the agreement is proposed is that utility taxes would all be rebated up to $1 million. So there's a cap on utility taxes. Sales tax is different. There's a sharing agreement over 15 years. The first five years of the agreement as proposed would provide 75% of the sales tax revenue that were non, 25% of the village. The next 10 years, it would be 50-50. And then there is provisions within the agreement that provide further incentives, about $900,000, to encourage Edward Don to um, work through, or to stay at the facility through their two five-year lease extensions. So that is the 30-year uh, agreement that's proposed. Okay. Does the does the rebate and resolution cover other utility taxes other than sewer and water? ComEd, NIGAS, cable, phones that the village collects? Okay, all right, all right. And do you know how much the sales tax revenue rebate for Edward Don is annually? Say the first year? The first year? 